was real slow today. Oops. Okay, so and now we're going to start writing Friday again. The copy pasting becomes slightly more complicated. All right, All right April second. Great. So, um, where are we at? Shall am I getting feedback on myself? What's going on here? Uh, that's weird. I'm getting weird feedback. And everybody's muted, so I don't know what's going on with that. All right. Um, what the hell? That's really weird. Okay. Anyways. Shaw, what do, what do we got going on with you today? Uh, I just wanted to give you a couple of updates. First, the data frame PR is ready for review. Uh, the should I example is failing there as well. So again, I don't know what's going on with that. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that's fine. Um, let's find out what the hell's going on here. And then, anything else going on? Uh, yeah. Um, I have. <laughs> Uh, I'm almost done with adding the exponential smoothing model as part of the forecasting models uh, issue. So we should have a PR on that soon. All right, fantastic. All right, is that is that all from you today? Yeah, uh, I actually had a small question. Uh, the GSOC proposals are due tomorrow, right? And I have to send them to you or on the mailing list? You can you can send, I mean, you can send it to me. You can send it in, uh, let's see. I should post the link, shouldn't I? Uh, today's meeting. Yeah, my meeting link expired as well, so. Oh, really? That's weird. Yeah. Oh, you know I what it is. Yeah. You know what it is, is is I'm trying to reuse the same link from the other meeting, and and so I don't know what we, I don't, it, it, will, it makes everybody ask to join. Um, so because it's the meeting from Monday's meeting, and it won't let me use the same meet thing. If you do, if you create the calendar entry, it won't let you... It's annoying. Um, so I just put it in the description of the meeting, and obviously this is maybe not the best idea. So it's just it's rather unfortunate that we have to have a different link each time. Um, but oh, yeah, who knows? All right. So and then Hashim, I have the confidence. I still haven't gotten around to that. Sorry, I'm pretty under pressure at work right now. Um, let's see, confidence PR. Uh, no problem. And then let's see. So, uh, Sahil, what what do we have from you? Uh, I have one work to discuss about that one percent thing, and uh, the CI lent tools to discuss. Okay, which which one was it? Yeah, this one. Okay, this one. Great. Yeah, thank you for working on this. Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Service to Oh yeah. Hey, hey, great, great job. Um nice. Okay, so So it is actually a different issue. It is not the one person thing is not related. What? No, no, the one person different. changes the one person changes thing is just like making it end and then uh, removing the duplicate logs from the logging screen. Yeah. But and uh, this this thing that uh, uh you know, like those bizarre numbers which are showing up, those yeah. are not related to this. This is related to so this, it, right? Yes, it, it should be a different issue. Well, that's okay. Okay, okay, great. Um, so, yeah, let's... I think you're correct that it has to do um, with the fact that there's no length provided. Um, let's see, because negative numbers, what would... I mean... What is the download code? OK. 
this download code says actually i was debugging it but uh, accidentally i created my own directory <laughs> oh no <laughs> so, so oh, i'm uh, sorry i don't have the code right now <laughs> oh my gosh that's the worst i'm sorry lockdown block size total size so total size it must not it must be returning like negative one for total size because it doesn't know what it is yes I, yes probably yeah. that's the case with older ftp servers that i saw it in the top yeah and minus one there yeah okay okay so let's let's maybe just let's see let's put a comment on this and let's say um okay so let's merge this um because this is this is making it hard to see what's going on with should i um let's see and let's see thank you for doing this um okay and change log no we don't want to change log all right. This is rather misleading how it gives you a giant check mark here and then not all the tests are passing them. But can cause confusion. Um, okay. And, the two um, tests that are failing other than LG, LTGM1 and uh, that uh, change log one are just, uh, you know, download failures. Download failures. Oh, yeah. Failures. That's annoying. Okay. Um, yeah, because this shouldn't affect any of that. All right. Well, let's see here. Let's merge this, um, and then I, yeah, the LGTM is just, I've tried to go update the damn file, um, but it's got, it's like all of a sudden it wasn't failing and now all of a sudden it's decided they must have updated something and decided that they're raising failure, but like we're following their, sp I don't understand what's going on. The fo format of the file is wrong. All right. So, ta -ta 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 -ta. okay. Oops. I don't want it this. Okay. Fixes. Perfect. Great. Thank you. So let's say uh, we've mer merged that. Um, Uh, the other thing to discuss is linting rules. So I came up with uh, a very generic rule. Uh, I had proper documentation, but I don't have it right now. Oh yeah. So I just draw an. <laughs> of course. I, I, just, I, I just draw an Excalibur draw quickly just before the meeting. So I'd like to share it. Okay, that soon. sounds great. Yeah. Why don't you? Let's see. Well, let's see. So one percent change PR. Okay. Um. I'm just done with the exponential spinning model. There's nothing to talk about there. Is there anything to talk about here, Shaw? Or is that just an update? Uh, no, just an update. Okay, great. Um, so, and then the other thing from you, Sahil, was you want to talk about the, yeah, okay, so uh, formatting. L linting of commit messages. Yeah. Commit messages. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and then, Hashim, what else from you? Anything else? Uh, yeah, I actually <clears throat> PR'd uh, a sample of uh, the use cases. Of just oh, yeah, I was looking at this. Yeah. Not very nice, yeah. Um, let's see. Um, you can view it as a file. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, what I had looked at it the other day. The, the only thing I'm 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 wondering about is this the way that we're doing imports. You know, we have a lot of examples that show imports like this, um, whereas we have a lot of you know we we load we can load the models via their entry point name by passing it to model load. And I realize you know there's no it's not document. So if you go to the plugins page. And you go uh, yeah, I know how to uh, load those, but um, uh, it won't allow you to, uh, you know, currently uh, load multiple models. Uh, it's either all of them or just one. Okay. You're talking about loading them dynamically. Yeah, I'm just I'm saying though we can just do. You can say. Um, 
Let's see. Um, yeah, let me view this file as. Yeah, you know, I I like I I I think what you've done is great. I am just wondering. The thing is that we don't have, so we need to change something about our documentation because the way that we do, um, let's see, for example, model PyTorch, right? And and I think there's there's more than just this, but we have. Let's see, where is it? Uh, I guess it's all sort of, no, there's no Python example here. Yeah, the problem is, I think the pro yeah, well, and the problem is we don't have a Python example. But the thing is, you don't know the import path looking at this. You just know that the entry point name, right? So if I went to go, um, right, I know the entry point, but I don't know the import path. If I wanted to do, you know, from the FML model PyTorch import one of these, that's not going to work, I don't think. I can't remember. But I think we have a few of these like this. Um, scratch, where is that? Scratch one. Now this one does work. Yeah, okay, logistic regression. Yeah, it's just there. we have an inconsistency in the way that this works, right? So consistent behavior would be, the, the, this is, the question is, you know, what, 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 should, the, what should the behavior be? Um, and consistency-wise... The thing is you have, yeah, so this gives you directly a class if you import the class, right? If you do a model.load, then you'd be like logistic regression equals model.load and then the entry point name, right? Um, yeah. And but that just, that adds, I guess it's, you swap this line for that and then you have the fact that it's documented here, right? This is sort of, it's more of a question of like how we either need to do it we need to do it. We need to have some more consistency, or we need to have some more documentation in all of the models to make sure that we know what we can, imp how we can import them, right? Um, and I'm kind of thinking, at this point, it would be, you, you, you basically have two choices, right? Audit, audit the models plugins page here to see, you know, to make sure that we have this example for everyone that somebody might want to use, or switch it to logistic regression equals model dot load and then um, scratch L G R S sag. Yeah. So you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I, I actually tried to uh, load two models at a time and it doesn't even allow that currently. Well you did you try to pass two entry points at the same time? Uh, I, I passed them separately. Try to pass them separately and it didn't work? Yeah. Okay, let's check that out because that's, that's a big problem. Um, okay. Okay, and let's, let's, let's do a really poor job of taking notes here. All right, so, and let's see, moving between models. All right, I put them in the book. Okay, and uh, anything else from you, Hashim? Uh, yeah, I also uh, wanted to ask if uh, uh, we really uh, have to test the notebooks. I mean, uh, I have created two examples, if you can see. Uh, uh, there are, uh, you could say, two workflows of uh, uh, the ways we can do this. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this one is uh, unit testable, while the other one isn't uh, the other notebook in this same PR. Okay, wait one second, so, oh, FN. So what's the difference here? Let's see. So which one's testable and which one's not? 
the one without fn is untestable. Okay, because you didn't put it in a function. Is that why? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And wait, so why is this not testable? Uh, I mean, like uh, uh, the way uh, test book works is it uh, extracts functions and then you can Ow. test their output. I see. Can you can it just extract blocks? Um, it didn't mention, but uh, I'd have to check more. The other thing is like this we could just extract the source from each one and run the whole thing you know because this is just i didn't realize that yeah. these are just like a nice little json file so this is pretty sweet um yeah. this is very convenient um because yeah we can just extract the um source from each one of these write it out to a file and then run the whole file right and make sure the file works as yeah, a, sure. Uh, easy but at here. the same time, uh, uh, they are quite uh, self-explanatory. Like uh, they, uh, at the spot, they give you the output of the cell. So I was uh, trying to, you know, understand the uh, why we need to test these. Well, we need to test everything. We can't not test something um, because right. as soon as we don't test something, then it becomes out of like, and we change something, then it becomes out of date. <laughs> Right, like or out of sync, yeah. and then it doesn't work, and then we're showing users documentation that doesn't that doesn't work, right? Um, right? And so that it also means that you know if somebody makes a change that you know if somebody makes a change, they don't know all of the pieces of documentation that need to be updated unless the documentation breaks, you know, because then it'll flag it in the right. CI. So it's really it's it's more for it's it's for users and it's it's a lot of. It's for users and it's for contributors, right? Because that way you don't have to go and you don't have to know ahead of time every place you're going to need to change. It just tells you when it breaks. <laughs> um, so, and this doesn't look too this doesn't look too complicated to test. I think you basically just like you if you want to do it on your own. Like if you can't use that thing, you could basically just grab grab the source from each one of these, write it all to a file, run yeah. the file, and then make sure that the output is the same, right? All right. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. There are other ways to extract uh, a Python file out of the notebook as well. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. So, yeah. Whatever you want to do here. Um, but yeah, we do need to make sure that they're tested. This looks great, though. Sure. Nice job. Um, so let's. Yeah, I think let's let's do. Let's switch it to model dot load, right? And then let's switch it to model dot load. <laughs> And then we'll come back and we may revisit that, you know, that decision later if we get more consistency in the plugins pages. But for now, um, for now, and you know, I don't think we have enough consistency there and it might be confusing. So we want more consistency better. Um, and I'm realizing we need to try to change the rest of the docs too. I realized this the other day. Um, so let's see. So, uh, so, uh, uh, which one is your preference out of the two I would notebooks? prefer, I think this is more, this is this is what people would probably write in a notebook, right? They wouldn't write the function. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because if the notebook supports yeah. top-level await, then then that's what people are going to do, right? So, and this is less yeah. code, this is clear, you know, um, so this looks great. Um the only thing is, I guess you're gonna if you run into these like file blocks and stuff. Yeah, this is probably something where you want to use some kind of testing library, right? Because or else you're gonna start having to implement all these random things. Um, so. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Great. This is great. Um, so we need to be able to test it. Um, prefer functionless. Um, and and what was that? The paper. Mill, what was it? Uh, was yeah, piece? it's test book. Uh, it's a module of paper mill test book. Okay. So I'm just curious here how printers work. Execute. Uh, put da, da, da. 
parameters are quick loading. Uh, strings as parameters. And blah, 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 blah. Execute pass to notebook. Okay, this should be pretty easy to integrate into our existing testing infrastructure. So that's good um, because it's all Python. Um, execute notebook. We call it the execute input notebook. And you're saying, but are you saying that this doesn't work unless you put functions in there, or? Uh, no, not this one. Uh, I was talking about the test book. Okay, okay. This because this looks. I mean, will this raise yeah, yeah. errors? I guess that's the question. Does this raise errors? You know, <laughs> making sure that it does is uh, key. So. I'll have a go at this one. All right, great. Yes, it, 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 it does raise errors. So okay. We use it at, uh, like, in proprietary CI and stuff. Okay. So it does raise errors. Great, great. Um, so let's see. Test with paper now. All right. Um, this one I'm going to still have to review this one offline because this one's too big. Um, so... I'm sorry, it just it just requires a lot of time. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, I have one more thing. Yeah. Um, I uh, I'll message you about it. Uh, can I uh, add like oh, I demos to demos to my project? Uh, like uh, the ones who downshoot it. I mean. Uh, oh, please do. I'll be focusing. All right. Yes, demos right. equals great. Yeah, demos are great. More, more, more demos is is more more better. Yeah, um, that's that's. All right, cool. Yeah, um, and when you say demos, what like what do you mean? Just so we're on the same page. Uh, like, uh, I'm not particularly uh, highlighting a specific use case, but mm -hmm. I'm uh, building around a data set. Okay, and what and what's the data set? Yeah. Um, just a sec. Uh, uh, there were two demos uh, with CLI examples that uh, didn't have code in the documentation. Yeah. Uh, MNIST, handwritten digits, and uh, the flower species classification. Mm -hmm. And other than that, I also have uh, taken out some data sets like heart disease uh, UCI data set. Okay, I'm not familiar with that. Um, yeah, it's uh, supposed to, uh, you know, you're supposed to predict if someone could have heart disease, heart okay. diseases or something. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so we want to add code um, to non side note. So side note, uh, if we see docs that, that are only CLI examples, so this is just a side note to this discussion. If we see docs, if you guys notice that docs only have CLI examples, um, we want to add Python examples to those as well. Um, OK. Um, and, and could I add uh, notebooks to those as well? Yeah. All right. Okay, the, yeah, so the thing is, okay, so the notebooks, we're going to need to figure out how do we display the notebooks. I mean, we can just reference people to the GitHub, but it would be nice if we could figure out how to display the notebooks in the, let's see, Sphinx IPython notebooks. Sphinx IPython notebook. Somebody must have done this, right? Yay. <laughs> like, this seems like something that someone would do. Uh, yeah. 2014. Okay, that's not it's not optimistic. Um, convert to RSP, RST. Oh well, that's great. Um, how to? Non-trivial to use with read the docs. Yeah, it would be nice if we can figure out how to make, um, oh, God, <laughs> uh, 
It would be nice if we can figure out how to make um, the IPython notebooks display on the website, um, just so that all the docs are in the same place. Um, uh, I, I have seen uh, uh, such notebooks being displayed in uh, Read the Docs websites, but okay. mostly they, they didn't have the theme we are using. They have that pandas kind of theme, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it probably tied in. Well, we can switch the theme. It's not a big deal. Um, we can switch the theme all day. Uh, okay. Great. So, change extension to the part. It's a source parser. Oh, yeah, and this should just be... Thank you. Oh, yeah, this shouldn't be too hard to do anyways. I was just looking at the way that the markdown files get converted, and basically the whole thing has this... They have this like intermediary representation that docutils does. So basically, you you parse the files, you build the syntax tree, like you build the you build the you build these node objects, and then so basically the the to the output writer, it doesn't matter if the input was RST or Markdown, you because they built these node objects uh, in memory, and then it writes them out. So you this looks like somebody probably. Uh, when I looked for it, it didn't work for me. <laughs> um, run notebook. Okay, yeah. So we'll we'll figure this out. Um, yeah, I'll look into it. Yeah, this would be. This would be oh, oh, let's just see. This is still around. Okay, great. Yeah, Shanks extension. Uh, yeah, let's just make sure that they still exist. February twenty eighth. Okay, great. Hey, sweet. All right, nice, very nice, looking good. Oh yeah, hey, darts. Oh yeah, 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 oh, this is beautiful, yeah. Oh yeah, this looks great. Oh, we'll have to steal the, whatever theme they're using, what theme are they using. Um, <laughs> yeah, we... this looks good. Oh my gosh, all right, okay, this looks fantastic, yeah. Great, okay, um, I'm glad we figured all that out. Okay, yeah, that'll that'll be nice. Um, okay, so thanks, Sahil. All right, okay. Uh, test the paper. Oh, we want to be able to to display them on the website on the doc site. All right, great. Um, so then, last thing. So between last uh model dot load wasn't working for multiple models, and I wonder if this is IPython specific. So we're about to find out. Uh, could you use the same two models just to be sure? Yeah, let's do it. Good idea. Okay. Uh, where to go? Okay. And we'll just do from DF. So SLR and linear regression. Uh, Psychic. All right. Yeah. Oh, Python 2. Get out of here. No model name 
data classes. Okay, what version? Oh God, what machine is this? What? No mod. Lie. That's a lie. Python 3.6. Why are you using Python 3.6? Where did it just come from? What is going on? Okay. All right, Python. What? Maybe we'll just create a virtual environment. Ridiculous. Ridiculous, I tell you. I don't understand how I don't do anything and my Python environment gets messed up. It's just like, what? what? Ah! Well, it looks like they're loading for me. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's loading for me. It might be an IPython notebook specific thing. It might be an issue that's, that's specific to IPython notebook. Um, so let's see. Uh, looks like... I'll, I'll check again and uh, okay. follow up on this. Okay, great. Um, It works with uh, in a regular Python file. Might be notebook specific. Okay. Um, and then Nitesh, what did you want to talk about? Uh, I want to discuss the issue uh, that is 831. Uh, where we are going to save the config dictionary of models. Okay. Let's see. So, confidence PR, move between models, notebook, done. Confidence PR, offline still. Sorry, too long. Um, data room PR, that one's probably going to be offline too, unless there's any question. Let's see. This should be a quick thing. So, let's just make sure because, oh, yay, see, I passed. Um, okay. So, there's still a lot of changes in here. Shaw? Yeah, it's still showing me uh, my uh, the changes from a previous pull request, even though we closed that, and I don't know why it's doing that. So okay. I'm not um, entirely sure what's happening. Is this, so, but this is the branch, right? Yeah. Okay. This new GitHub, they finally rewrote it in Go, and now it works. Um, source pandas data frame. Okay, I think a merge commit happened here that was not what we wanted. So I think we need to go through and source trade in white space. All right, so what happened here? Um, uh, source data frame. Move. Yeah, I think that merge sent us into a, a bad spot. Um, so let's see. Uh, I think what I would recommend is that if um, like the question is really like, where did you diverge from master? Um, I think I'd recommend just pulling out the files, create a new branch, pull out the files and put them in a new branch because something's amiss, you know? All right. 
uh, I'll create a new branch and uh, so uh, okay, I'll create a new branch and submit a new pull request. Okay, great. Yeah, uh, something went wrong with Git. Um, create Git is annoying. New branch and just put changes related to this PR in it. Um, and things like, so if you did like git checkout, that should be new. And then you did git checkout. Oh, wait. Why is tab complete stop working? Everything stopped working. Ah, I rebooted. Ah. Okay. Um, so yeah, so this is your new branch, right? It's on whatever. So you can do git checkout and then what is it? Um, what everything sucks now. Great. Uh, uh, what was it called? What was that branch? Oh, I lost it now. Um, oh, well, you, you can do git checkout. You can say like git checkout. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then the file and then you'll be good. You, you, you got it. Um, yeah, I'll figure it out. Great. Um, Okay, so I have a hard stop here at 10, which is why I'm sort of frantically going through things. All right, so, and then we have Sudhancha. Okay, Sudhancha, what do you what do you have uh, today? Uh, I had to ask some questions regarding proposal. Okay. Yes, so there are two questions. So are we taking it right now? Um, yes. Okay. So my first question is like uh, about the SQL uh, scorer method is there. So what I actually figured out is that every uh, every model itself also has a score method. Mm -hmm. So do I also like need to implement that as well in the proposal? Um, well, I mean, I think that. Well, so every model has its own score method, right? Just kind of yes, like, kind of similarly to how we were doing it originally, right? Yes, originally we are doing it like So that. you probably can just make one score that calls the score method of that model, right? Does the model still get passed to the score? I can't remember how this works now. Yes, okay. model context get passed and right. just context too. So that's just one score then. So that should that should be pretty low maintenance to implement, right? Yep. Okay. Okay. And that would basically, yeah, that would effectively replace the existing, what what we had, like, you know, that would effectively be the same thing as the test that existed in Scikit before this, um, I think. Um, I don't know. Um, yeah, I would just say implement, implement it as like, you know, a path, the, the thing that just says, you know, um, okay, let's see. So, um, each... Uh, scikit model has its own score function um, and you, you know just uh, make a score for this um, name it something <laughs> name it something that implies it's going to call the the score function of the model you know More yeah, yeah like like scikit score or something like scikit model score or something or something that uh, accurately describes what it does. Okay, yeah, I think, you know, I don't think that should be too much work, right? Yeah, that should be it. Yeah. Okay, cool. And Great. Uh, one more question is, uh, uh, what are the expectations in the, in the, in the GSOC project pre-made data flows for the data cleanup? What are the expectations? Yes, so actually I was actually like, I figured out like what are the cleanup operations that uh, we can perform. Uh -huh. And so like there are like, uh, like I figured out like 10, 10, 10 or 12 of them. But uh, originally like I'm planning to implement like seven of them. Okay. So like for whatever like I have like decided what should be like the expectation for it. Okay. Like. Uh, 
well, what should be in the proposal? Yeah, what should be in the proposal? Well, so, uh, okay, so. This is a quick one. So, so basically, I would I would say that um, y you do focus focus on example data sets. Uh, make sure that you have um, you know three to four example data sets that you're going to clean up. Uh, write like write tutorials. Uh, where you use the operations you've decided to make to clean up the data. Does that make sense? Like, oh, okay. Look at data, like find find some data sets that require cleanup, right? And then your project focuses on implementing the operations, and then. Um, and then writing tutorials that show, you know, why, like that, that show the value of that, right? Through through real data set examples. Yep. Yes. All right. Um, okay. Anything else there? Uh, no, that's it. Thank you. All right. Great. Um, so eight thirty one. Man, I keep trying to type this issue and I get it wrong. <laughs> All right. So. Oh yeah, this is rather nondescript, isn't it? <laughs> um, let's see. So this is basically, I believe that the, the what was happening here was, um, you know, models right now they have their config dictionary, and they like the way that okay. So let's look at this. Um, um, yeah, where's that a dot py? All right, there. So here's the config dictionaries, right? Um, okay. Does this have an export? No. All right. Bullshit. Oh. Okay, there we go. So each of these has a config dictionary, right? Um, and so if I wanted to load, so if I wanted to save this model, right, the model gets saved to its directory, right? But also, okay, uh, where's, let's see, uh, where's that? God. Yeah, as as we are saving the models, right? So uh, yeah. I didn't get what what's the use of this saving the config as well. So, so yeah, that's what I'm demonstrating. All right, I, I, yeah, one second. Um, it will become clear in a second. So basically, um, uh, so so um, loadable. So when we Okay, so when we instantiate, so when we leave the model to, to save it, um, exec type, exec value, trace back. Okay, so when we leave the model here, so this is the, you know, uh, example, example loadable. Um, and so we're going to add this class method um, that's like, you know, that basically we're going to add a method that um, we're going to add a method that allows us to load from the directory or, or file, you know, within the directory, right? And so we can basically just say, um, uh, uh, what is, I'm just going to name it A because I apparently can't think. Um, 
so we when we exit we say self dot config dot directory um, you know slash a dot json because I can't think um, and then we write out um, the contents of the config dictionary um, and then that way we can go in in this a method here so this is model one and so we saved the config of model one and then in the a method we basically say you know instantiate the class um, and you know if, if I'm given a directory load the a file read text JSON loads star star JSON dot loads right so basically when you when you leave the model save the save the file or save the config to the file and then you implement this method that loads the model data from the file right um, but you probably want to override the directory here to be you know whatever the directory is now just in case like the directory got moved right so um, let's see how do we do that star star or yeah directory is directory the other thing is that like you know this file name is sort of susceptible to okay fine be like that this file name now is sort of susceptible to uh, the fact that, like, what if something overwrites it? Um, uh, oh, I put that in the wrong spot, didn't I? JSON loads. Yeah. So this file name is now susceptible to the fact that, like, something something could overwrite the file name, you know? And then, let's see, where did it go? Coroutine accuracy was never awaited. Oh, because we're doing um, from no async import train accuracy. All right, so now we can basically take, um, you know, and this would be, we do this on, on model itself. Actually, we can just do it on model. Um, and then we can take this and say example loadable, you know, dot a, I guess this is, yeah, whatever. You know, you're implementing this on the model base class, right? And so then you can just say um, model one dot config dot directory. And now it should give you, oh yeah, it's basically, basically this type of thing. Oh yeah, and this is directory. Come on, JSON object with me, sure, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. You get the picture. Um, do you get the picture? Does this make sense? No, no idea. Okay, yet. okay, so... This is also sort of a part of that archive storage one. So basically, um, let's see, no such file or directory. So uh, at the high level, we are saving the config so that we can manipulate uh, yeah. the config, right? Yeah, we're saving the config. Oh, that's why. Um, we're saving the config because we, if we if we... Um, if we save the config um, on ex like on exit from the model, then we can um, if we save the config on exit from the model, then we can use that config file to like reload the model, right? Because the model has state in the directory and it has state in the config, and the config should always be serializable, right? Um, and so if I wanted to load the same model, like if you guys, you guys have probably seen job lib and stuff, 
if I wanted to load the same model, right, the thing is I would be pointing at a specific directory. So I need some sort of like file, and this is if this is why it feeds into that other project um, where we're doing, um, uh, you know, the, the directory becomes location and stuff. So this is part of that too. Um, this is like a pre work. This is like this needs to get done as a part of that. Um, so basically, if you write out, so you write out the context of the the contents of the config somewhere in that directory, right? And that way, you can basically just use that config file to reload all of the parameters that were in. Oh, well, this needs to be like that too. Um, you can use this config file to reload all of the parameters, like that, all of the properties of the model's config. Um, and so, right? So we we basically just um, does this does this does it make sense now or? Because basically, you save all the config properties, you re, you load all the config properties from the file, and then you override the directory property to be what it is now, just in case somebody moved the directory because they dumped out the directory with the rest of it, right? And that way you can yes, load. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is for some. I don't understand why it is not working. SLR model model a dot JSON. I don't understand. It doesn't make sense um, because it should have. It should have train one. Should have. Should have done that. But that's okay. Um, whatever. Um, public uh, uh, issue eight thirty one. Finally got it right. Um, diff well, issue eight thirty one. Um, so need to make. It's so that config properties are saved slash loaded from file or can be. What? Oh. All right. There we go. So we'll put this up there. Um, and we will see. Okay. So let's talk about that linting of commit messages real quick. Do you want to go ahead and present, Sahil? Uh, yes. So, so right. can you see my screen? Great. Uh, yes. Right. So, so this is the this is the generalized commit uh, structure where we have our commit message at the end and mm -hmm. various subparts separated by colons. Uh, so it could be like three or four. The, the, we don't have depth beyond four, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I've just drawn a uh, generic one, and then what we would do is like take these parts and add them to the root. Uh, and make a path out of it. So mm -hmm. it should be a directory or a file. Uh, uh, extension of the file is not necessary. Uh, if it's not a di directory, then we will check for if that's there is a file with that name. Yep. And uh, uh, the, this would need to change. So some things would need to change. Like if we are putting something inside DFFML, we would need to start it with some specific word so that I can replace that specific word. And I would say like we have something like core. Okay, so the thing uh, is, when we're we're going, we're about to move basically everything that's not core out of it, so we can safely assume that you know, if you see slash dffml in the first part, then you know you should re you should remove it, right? Uh, no, no, no. I'm saying that just uh, if we if if a commit message starts with core, that means uh, that file or that path. It, this part, if, if if it is core, it would be replaced with DFFML. That's it. Okay. Okay. So, and I'm saying though, we have an existing. You know, I'm. I think this is. I think in, in theory this is good, but we're. I we don't want to change the way that it works right now because the way that it works right now, 
implies that you know you're doing things in in the in the core package right like so if we all of a sudden start prefixing everything with core everything's going to be prefixed with core right you see what i'm saying if we move oh, all the second party cool. plugins out then every we're just going to have all, all our commit messages are going to be prefixed with core and then core doesn't really mean anything right okay so we can like uh, if we don't find it in the root we will look for it uh, in the ffml we can do that yeah, exactly. Yeah, there you go. So, okay, so I, I, I'll change it. And uh, uh, for example, if you need to address some things, like if we go up in the meeting minutes and we see like we have some things starting with uh, uh, maintenance or plugins uh -huh. and some that sort of stuff. So we can have a pref prefix suffix or symbol to say that like this this thing is not a part of the path and we can ignore that uh -huh. safely. Okay. So these, okay. this is this is the basic thing I had on my head. That sounds good. Yeah. No, this sounds great. Yeah, I want to hear more about four, because um, I think you know that's 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 things like so. This is stuff like you know we talked about cleanup and um, yes, yes, yeah, stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Let's try to so, enumerate so, those. Yeah. So we can like put a dash or something like that, uh, and that would just skip that part. Like if it is in the start. And it has a certain symbol or prefix or suffix. We can decide on that, whatever it is. Okay. And uh, we can just ignore that safely, like that. It is about plugins, but it does not have to be uh, inside a plugins directory like that. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. So let's and and I think I think you're probably good to start writing. You can probably start writing some code right now, and then you know you'll you'll you have some variables that you can throw in, you know, for four. Um, but you can probably start writing some code at this point, right? Yes, yes. All right. And right. another thing that would be... I, be sorry, I, I have to run. Validate. I have to run right now. Um, but um, can you send me this question on Gitter? Uh, I have already asked it on uh, okay, GitHub. Okay, let's issue. see. You've already asked it on GitHub. Issue. Can you link it? Link me to it? Because there's just so much going on. It's hard to, hard to get everything. Sure, sure. I, I right. do that. Great. All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, if, if we didn't get to your thing, please, um, you know, please... Please raise raise on on Gitter here and and ping me um, ping me directly too if if you're if if you haven't gotten a response. All right, thanks. Have a good one. Bye.